All right, hi everyone. We've got a new uh, plagiarism checker in Canvas. Uh, you may have noticed it already. So unit check is still there. We're going to keep that through the end of the calendar year, so through December. Um, but right now, you may have already noticed that there is a second plagiarism checker in there called Copy Leaks. And definitely, when you come back uh, in January, that will be the only plagiarism plagiarism checker that is in there. So we're giving you a t some time to transition. If you don't want to deal with it, you can continue through fall. But when you come back in January, beware, there is only going to be one. There's a lot of reasons for that, you know, contracts, buyouts, all stuff that you could not care less about. The one reason that you do need to know uh, that we're switching over it's important from your perspective is that copy leaks does have an AI detector an artificial intelligence detector um, it's a tool that you can use it is not the end-all and be-all and we'll talk about that a little bit um, but um, it's there it's available for you again when you come back in January it'll be the only one there but we want to do is just walk you through it and do a few things okay so we're going to set up a canvas assignment and show you how to do that if you've never done it before if you have done it in the past with you check it's basically the same so it should be very easy for you okay we're going to submit a plagiarized assignment so that you can see what that looks like from your perspective we're going to submit an AI generated assignment so you can see what that looks like uh, from your perspective then we're going to show you exactly why you shouldn't rely too much on AI detectors because we're going to do a couple of you know bing bang boom changes to it submit it again and see what happens to our AI score when we do that things that are easily available to your students and then finally we're going to show you one kind of tip or trick and that is how to submit something to copy leaks directly what that means is someone emails you assignment or you have a, it's written on paper or something like that it's not in canvas we're going to show you how you can just very quickly submit it to copy leaks on your account and then um, it'll give you back a report okay so let's go ahead and get started so we're in the class if you've never done this before it's really easy if you have done it before it's even easier because as I said it's the same but you click on assignment to create an assignment we're gonna click on add assignment and since I did so fabulous with auto repair last time I'm gonna do something I know even less about and that's fire services so I'm gonna call this assignment inspection and fire services instructors you know Brian you can start giggling right now if you want um, but what I'm gonna do is make a question and ask um, what are some things you should check before entering a building that is ablaze I'm sure the that that is exactly the terminology you guys use on a test and I nailed it um, I'm gonna skip all this it's all the stuff that you basically do you know how many points when is it due all of that sort of stuff what I'm gonna do though is switch this from online to no submission or on paper and you'll notice that there is no uh, plagiarism detector available because obviously it's not in canvas uh, those types of assignments but as soon as I switch to online and then choose either text entry or file uploads or some combination you'll notice that the plagiarism review box is now here again I click on it you'll see unit check that's going away in January so we're gonna click on copy leaks okay and we already have the scan setting set for you so you don't need to deal with that that's just basically saying how sensitive or not sensitive do you want this check to be what do you want to include or exclude from your search okay so you don't have to deal with that the one question you have to answer is when do you want the students to see the report now we always recommend immediately if there's no reason to avoid that you know you want your students to see the report in most cases so they can look at that and go oh wow I got flagged they can go back and look at their assignment and go oh I thought I quoted that I thought I paraphrased that I thought I cited that properly so they can take their own agency over citations about academic integrity and plagiarism they can fix the paper and resubmit it okay so if that's possible that's the best practice obviously there's reasons why there wouldn't be so if that's the case you can switch us from immediately to after I've graded it after the due date or even never so that's something that you're gonna keep behind the curtain and they'll never see it but again all things being equal it's great to give the students the opportunity to learn about academic integrity so I'm gonna leave it on immediately and again you can put whatever you want here I'm gonna skip all that and just go to save and publish
Okay, so that's it. I have now set up an assignment. Uh, I have added a plagiarism checker. One thing to point out is you notice I didn't have to click anything for AI. That happens automatically, both plagiarism and AI, and we'll see that in a little bit, but you don't have to do anything to tell it specifically, hey, I also want you to check for AI. That takes care of it. Okay, so I'm going to go in as our practice student, good old Zippy. So click on him, act as Zippy. And Zippy is in the class, and you know, Zippy's kind of a ne'er do well. Um, and so he has decided that he doesn't like actually doing work. And he was really busy and didn't actually get any of his work done. So he reads this and goes, Oh my goodness, I have no idea how to do this. I'm just going to go find a place that gives me that information. And because I am a horrible human being, I am just going to copy and paste. Assuming I can actually copy and paste. There we are. Copy and paste it into here. Boo Zippy, don't do that. Um, and there we go. And before your students could submit, if you've authorized a plagiarism check, they actually have to assert that this is their own original work. So Zippy, boo, in addition to being a cheater, you're a liar. Okay, but that's what, that's what it looks like from your student's perspective. And then they click on Submit Assignment. And there we go. It's now been submitted. So when your students go into grades or you go into grades, notice we said immediately. It's not immediately, immediately. You're going to see a little clock there because it might take 30 seconds to a couple of minutes, depending on how long it is and how busy it is to actually grade it. But that clock says there is a plagiarism report coming very shortly. Okay, so we're going to cheat and edit the wait time out and show you what it looks like. Okay, so as you see, Zippy's in trouble. He's got the bright red flag of death, so we click on it to see what the heck's going on for Zippy. And if you've never done this before, this is what it does. It says, hey, there, I actually was able to match 100% of the content with a different source. Um, please don't stop right there. You are going to want to double check and actually look at those sources, okay? Because for example, right here, it says that it matched a essay that's already been submitted. Well, yes, that's because when I was prepping this video, I submitted it. So sometimes that happens, like especially with stuff like practice tests, you can actually get a false positive where it matches your essay to a previous essay you submitted and flags it. So I'm going to tell it to actually exclude that one. And if that was the only one, you'd see that 100% drop to, you know, maybe zero, maybe five, maybe 10, something like that. But Zippy has much bigger problems than the fact that this was submitted previously, and that is this link right here. So you look at it, you see it's 100% similar words, so please don't take uh, CopyLeak's word for it. You click on the link, and it pulls it up, and you look at it, and you look, scroll down and go, oh my goodness, Zippy, not only are you a cheater, not only are you a liar because you said it was your own, you're stupid. You didn't even change the formatting or the numbering or anything like that. So you look at this and go, oh my goodness, it is a 100% match. I've got my source, so it is clearly plagiarism. Now is the time when you go and talk to your student, whatever your policy are, you know, whether it's you give them a zero, whether it's you talk to them and they get a warning and they can resubmit, but now's the time when all those plagiarism practices now kick in and you're going to need to go talk to the student about this. And again, the nice thing is you have the actual citation. So if the student says, I don't know what you're talking about I did it you can go okay well here's the site right here so let's get past that part of the discussion and go to the how we're going to deal with this part of the discussion okay so that's how it deals with plagiarism that hopefully is pretty straightforward to you what I'm going to do now is have Zippy just go back in and do it again with a few different submissions so I'm going to click on new attempt because I allowed unlimited attempts and now I'm going to go into chat GPT and again boo zippy he said well I plagiarized and got caught last time so this time I'm going to use chat GPT to generate an AI answer to that question maybe I'll have better luck this time so he copies and pastes it he again says it's his own original work boo zippy and clicks on submit assignment and then goes to grades and see if his dastardly plan has succeeded this time so again, I'm going to edit out. We see the stoplight. In, you know, 60 seconds or so, we should have a flag telling us what's going on. 
All right, so now we see again the red flag of death, although in this case, we're kind of being transparent to show you that it's actually an error because that can happen. So I'm gonna click on my red flag here and you'll notice that all of these red flags say copy leaks internal database, which means it's something that's already been submitted. And in this case, it's actually, you can see very clearly, it's actually stuff that I've submitted in the last couple of hours as I was working through this. So I'm going to just click on and exclude all of these, and you'll see that score drop. Okay, so good news, bad news for Zippy. It now says 0% match, which is accurate. This is not plagiarized from anywhere. Once we removed basically copying his own paper that he'd submitted, okay? However, hopefully you see that bright red C alerts. You know, they're trying to make it obvious, so it's right there, C alerts in two different places. That's where you're gonna see the AI alerts. So I click on that. And it says, suspected cheating AI text detected. We're unable to verify that this was written by a human. Okay, and then I click on preview, and it says, here's the stuff that we think was AI generated. All right, so let's pause for a second. Sorry, Tim's going to get on with Soapbox again. Big shock, right? Okay, the problem with this is AI detectors are notoriously inaccurate. So it's a great tool. Please use the tool. We're providing it to you. But you also need to know your students and their work and use those sorts of methods as well. This is just something to flag stuff and maybe bring it to your attention. In fact, I've got some very specific language to show you. And that is right here. This is coming straight from the deans and from Johnny the VPI. Okay? Uh, the language that we are using for copy leaks that we want to pass on to you guys is this. A high AI detection score by itself is not grounds for a failing grade. The detection score simply flags passages that have a similarity to AI generated content. If you wish to take punitive action, for example, giving them a zero, uh, taking academic action against them, you must investigate further. So what are some things that would be? Maybe it's talking to the student. Maybe it's comparing it to previous work. Maybe it's you generate an AI uh, response and compare it and see how similar to it is. But you're going to have to do more than just go, aha, you got an 87 score on this or something like that. So the key thing we want to stress here, actions taken solely as a result of AI scores and copy leaks will not be supported on appeal by the VPI. So to put that into plain English, I think it's pretty obvious. If you flunk a student, they appeal the grade, you end up in Johnny's office with an academic appeal and they say, I didn't use AI. And you say, yes, they did. And Johnny says, well, how do you know that? And you went, well, I ran it through copy leaks and it said it was AI. That's not going to be supported. So you're going to want to do those things we talked about. Again, comparing it to other items as well. Okay, off my soapbox, but that's actually really important because some of you have talked about this and wanting AI to kind of fix the problem or an AI detector, and it's not. It's a tool that you have. You still have to do it the old fashioned way. Okay, so let's get back into here. So we ran it through and it flagged it and then you know again maybe we did our own chat gpt maybe we compared it to the student's work maybe we asked the student what some of the words they used were and they had no idea what those words meant but one way or another they've done that now what i want to do is demonstrate to you why um, you don't want to rely only on the AI tool. And I know I'm almost bad mouthing it. It's good. It's great. Use it. But don't only use it. What I'm going to have the student do is go to this website here, undetectable.ai. And that's a subscription based thing like Course Hero and stuff like that that your students can find on Google in about 15 seconds. Um, and it says, hey, pay us some money and we will take your. Uh, AI generated content and make sure that it passes the AI um, screening. So we're going to copy this and see whether that actually works or not. So we're going back to our class. We're going back to our assignment. We are going to submit it again. Click on text, copy and paste, lie through our teeth and submit assignments. Man, Zippy, this would have been so much quicker if you'd have just done the assignment right the first time. All right, again, we go to grades, we pull up a coffee, and we wait. All right, and again, we see the red flag of death. Uh, again, this is all false positives. You'll notice the only hits that it got for plagiarism were from the ones that I've submitted, you know, including the one that I just submitted, you know, 10 minutes or so ago. So when I exclude those, 
you'll notice 0% match and you'll notice a complete lack of AI generated flags right there. Okay, I will pause for you to gasp in horror, but this is why we say copy leaks is a great tool, but please do not rely on it. In this case, by simply joining a subscription service and running my AI generated content through that, it then made it so that it's specifically designed by submit to beat any AI detection software and I end up with 0% plagiarism and uh, no flag for AI generated content. Okay, so want to make everybody aware that that's what's out there and again it is easily accessible to your students. All right, so that kind of walks us through the process. I did say I wanted to show you guys one more thing and that is what happens when somebody um, submit something outside of Canvas. Again, a piece of paper, a Word document, email, something like that that's not in Canvas. So what you can do, I'm going to copy this. All right, and I'm going to go to, and I'll put this in the description as well, but it's just simply apps.copyleaks.com. So now that I'm on this dashboard, I'm simply going to click on Upload. All right, and I can submit a file or a free text. Those are the two most common. You can also do submit some other things, but those are the two most common you're going to use. I'm going to click on free text, and I'm going to go back to this page, just because it's one we've already done before. Our steps here, and submit it, and click on scan down to the bottom. That's it. Just click on the text, copy and paste it, and scan it and you should see it vanish very shortly and then it'll load and again edit 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 and we'll see what happens all right and as you see zippy is once again in trouble so if his master criminal plot was to plagiarize but email it to the instructor so that it wouldn't go through canvas's plagiarism checker alas thwarted again zippy so you would just upload it to copy leaks directly and it will give you a report right here uh, so you can print this out, uh, download it, whatever you want to do, and again, go have that nice conversation with Zippy, explaining to him the error of his ways. Okay, so I think that walks us through everything, how to create the assignment, what it looks like from a student perspective and from your perspective. As always, if you got any questions, give us a call, shoot us an email, we'll be happy to walk you through this, but hopefully this will get you guys started. Again, one last time, the reminder... Um, this will be our only plagiarism detector going forward starting in the winter in January 2024. All right. 